Hello, my name is Lisa Chepesky, and today I'm going to talk to you about rethinking career education in order to prepare students for careers in the 21st century and beyond. Advancements in technology have decreased routine manual labor jobs and increased the demand for analytic work. Current research recognizes that high school students struggle with the transition to life after graduation as they do not have the skills employers require. I questioned how I could be a driving force to help equip students for the future. This information from my paper will help me embark on my new school district position overseeing career education. This paper is an argument for changing career education classrooms in BC to incorporate 21st century skills at the core of the curriculum so all students, regardless of their path, will have relevant career readiness. Career preparation could be addressed through the incorporating the Partnership for 21st Century Learning Framework alongside Nell Nodding's Theory of Care. In addition, I consider utilizing electronic portfolios as the preferred assessment method of 21st century skills as it is holistic assessment method based on individualized learning. The purpose of this presentation is to provide a context for the value of 21st century skills being taught in high schools as educators have a responsibility to help all learners achieve success. With the focus of 21st century skills in the career education classroom, students will become better prepared to enter the competitive and globalized workforce or higher education upon graduating from high school. Teachers can fail these high school students, not because we are indifferent, but because we have focused too exclusively on a few narrow pathways to success. It is time to widen our lens and build a more finely articulated pathway system, one that is richly diversified to align with the needs and interests of today's young people and better designed to meet the needs of the 21st century economy. The curriculum in British Columbia is drastically changing. There's a transition towards education based on curricular competencies and big ideas rather than rote memorization of content. The three big core competencies of communication, thinking, and personal and social competencies can enable students to develop the capacity to allow them to think critically for themselves. Western cultured schools continue to move from teacher-centered to student-centered lessons. Career education courses create opportunities for students to explore a vast array of real-life learning connections while focusing on the students' interests and their personal views. Dewey discussed that learning is a process of moving from curiosity to critical thinking. I follow Dewey in a more progressive approach in which teachers and students should work together to create the ability to apply their knowledge in real life. If teachers want to prepare students to succeed in their educational and career pursuits, they must pay attention to the full spectrum of knowledge and skills proven to be essential for success, including those that lie beyond the core academic disciplines. Research investigating what it takes to be successful in school and work supports a more holistic view of college and career readiness. There is current evidence on the importance of having a well-educated society and the reality that the current educational system is leaving a large percentage of high school students unprepared for college and work. There are troubling signs that schools are now failing to meet its obligations to prepare millions of young adults. Within the BC economy, there is growing evidence of a skills gap in which many young adults lack the skills and work ethic needed for many jobs that pay a middle class wage. Simultaneously, there has been a dramatic decline in the ability of adolescents and young adults to find work. The theory of classroom teaching has evolved alongside other traditional leadership theories. Project-based, inquiry-led, active, experiential student work has shifted the focus from teacher as the provider and shaper of thought and knowledge to the facilitator, strengthening the student's abilities in order that they can be front and center in their learning. These principles are considered in relation to the BC Ministry of Education's new curriculum guidelines to the three core competencies of thinking, communication, and personal and social responsibility. In moving towards the exploration of big ideas, the new curriculum can be applied to different contexts of career readiness and using the core competency development to understand their strengths and weaknesses and how these can be applied to life after high school.
I claim that it is imperative to revise curriculum in the career education classes for the reasons that workplaces require different skill sets in the 21st century and all students require relevant career and life skills to prepare them for life after graduation. In addition, group work and not standardized tests may be the best way to help students develop the skills for the future. Research connects communication, technology, and transferable skills to the competencies that many workplaces are looking for today and discover that many students are lacking, the, lacking these skills upon graduation. Other studies explored the value of developing these core competencies to help all learners succeed with real-life endeavors after school. The researchers analyzed the relationships between soft skill development and success in the workforce and suggest that these competencies benefit all students and not just high-achieving students. Further research discovered that employers were looking for more than academic courses and that project-based work increases communication and thinking skills, which they described as vital to success in the workplace. To cope with the demands of the 21st century, people need to know more than just core subjects. They need to know how to use their knowledge and skills. By thinking critically, applying knowledge to new situations, analyzing information, and making decisions. Learning skills are, are cognitive skills, and the literature divides them into three broad categories, which follow the BC Ministry core competencies. The first is information and communication skills, analyzing, accessing, managing, and creating information in a variety of forms and media. The second is thinking and problem solving skills by using sound reasoning to understand and make complex decision choices. The third is interpersonal and self-direction skills, which is demonstrating teamwork and leadership and adapting to a variety of roles and responsibilities. Attempting to understand students is not a simple process as every child is a unique individual. Literature discusses that when teachers take the time to ask questions and listen, there is a good chance of understanding our students even better. The teacher can ensure that students' graduation expectations are realistic if they know them. External influences such as family members, educators, and community groups can have significant impacts on individuals as they make decisions related to work or school. When students struggle, research indicates that having a supportive parent, mentor, or caring adult is one of the strongest protective factors for them to remain resilient. Nodding scrutinizes educational methods that overemphasize rote memorization, standard methods of teaching, and lacking care. She believes improving students' relationships with teachers has important, positive, and long-lasting implications for both students and academic and social development. The assessment of 21st century skills may require different approaches from those that have dominated the assessment systems until now. The traditional evaluation of pass-fail cannot determine how students have reached competencies in a particular area and an assessment that is in a holistic evaluation is beneficial for student learning. Electronic portfolios have been receiving increasing attention as an effective approach to foster lifelong learners and critical thinkers. The literature argues that e-portfolios may have advantages such as improved reflection, critical thinking, and student control over their learning, which are all 21st century skills. Literature discussed that it is imperative that high schools equip the future workforce with the innovative skills required for a competitive economy. Teaching 21st century skills ensures all students, rather than just the privileged, have access to rich education that helps them learn in the future. This effort requires three primary components. First, educators must ensure that they are teaching the proper skills. Second, school districts need to revamp how they think about professional development for teachers. Finally, assessments that can accurately measure richer learning and more complex tasks are required. Technology can hinder the implementation of electronic portfolios in a school. Duvel and Pass discussed that electronic portfolio construction takes time and that students need technology skills and that technical problems can be cumbersome and frustrating. Not only do teachers need training, the schools need to have the infrastructure so students can complete the work. The literature discussed that technology creates opportunities, that th but there are many technical challenges that deter teachers from using technology. Research also suggests that both pre-service and in-service teachers need proper training. 
Mary found that although teachers thought that they were teaching 21st century skills, they were not, as they did not have the curriculum guidelines and professional development to assess their own practice. Teachers lacked the capacity to teach these skills. The researchers discussed that having that teachers have a demanding job and that professional development and leadership are required to properly teach the skills in class. The overarching purpose of 21st century education is to provide students with a set of critical thinking skills that will be needed for success in a global market. The Partnership for 21st Century, discussed previously, identified creativity, collaboration, critical thinking, and communication. In order to help our children develop these skills to a high level, teachers must incorporate different modalities that are relevant to present times and also engage the student with the instruction techniques that facilitate learning given their own individual experiences, skills, and interests. A global paradigm shift is occurring. It is affecting frames of reference about the ways of life, work, and society, and how they are viewed and organized. This recognizes new learner characteristics of the 21st century, therefore it is better to modify instructional design principles according to these following points. The first being goal analysis. We need to look at the goals and associate them with 21st century learning skills. The second, we need to define our learners and consider the characteristics of each of the learners. From there, we need to choose the strategies with students that help them develop the 21st century learning skills. After that implementation, we need to focus on the learners and the learning, not the, not the instruction. We need to create a student-centered, collaborative, and technology-intense learning environment. The last thing we need to do is evaluate the students. Use e-portfolios and let the students evaluate themselves and each other. I believe one of the most important roles for a career education teacher is to introduce students to a wealth of learning opportunities and choices so students are inspired to think about who they are and who they can be. In addition, teachers need to provide students with a variety of ways to obtain the skills they need for the current and future learning opportunities. This aligns with our district career education mission statement to spark and support students to discover their unique career and life journey. Every student, wherever they are, whatever their family circumstances, wherever they go to school, should have the opportunity to hear about all jobs and career paths. The data from a recent international survey shows that students are still exposed to traditional jobs and not 21st century jobs, such as technicians or skilled trades, and are highly focused on academic skills. Although the world of work has changed over the last 20 years, the aspirations of the students has been static. Perhaps it is because teachers do not have time to analyze the trends. However, providing all occupations, regardless of stereotyping and removing stigmas, will help students learn a new career path that is of interest. Students cannot be what they cannot see. Career education today requires students to learn skills to reevaluate choices in the rapidly advancing world. Sherat and Harold discuss to not waste the time of students learning things that were important 50 years ago. Educational technology, school district guidelines, and curriculum standards are constantly changing, making it challenging for teachers to keep up with the trends and best practices in the field. Professional development transforms teachers into better and more apt instructors by enabling them to create relevant and tailored course instructions for today's students. Teachers need guidance if they do not fully understand the changing dynamics of career education. Sitting down one-on-one, -on -one, listening, collaborating, and coming up with a game plan that works for th with the teacher will aid in success in the new curriculum rollout. The most effective professional development initiatives will engage career education teachers to focus on the needs of their students. As Magnifico was referred to in the literature, giving resources, rubrics, and collaboration time will allow teachers to talk about areas of concern and clarify unknown answers. I followed the literature from Nearing with the importance of knowledge and created professional development sessions for teachers. My first step is to look at the core competencies and pair them with the curricular and content goals and come up with themes. From the themes, units can be created and have sample lesson plans, rubrics, and activities. This plan will take time to develop as I need the input from teachers. The teachers can collaborate, share resource resources, 
and talk about best practices and what could be or could not be implemented further in their practice to incorporate 21st century skills. This active reflection will allow teachers to be involved in the learning and build relationships with colleagues. I need to clearly communicate the action plan. I need to model the way. I need to set the example for teachers by providing resources, continue with professional development, reading books and sharing resources, also having collaboration, professional development and build a community together. We need to inspire for a shared vision. The BC curriculum has changed and through focusing on core competencies, this will help all students in the future. Change is a slow process, but getting into the classrooms to engage with the teachers and build the relationships will help the process. I want to create an inclusive, equitable learning environment to help all students. I need to challenge the process. I need to find innovative ways to improve, such as through career panels, self-assessments, new website, new resources, and focusing on student development through the use of electronic portfolios. I will ensure that I have the resources for teachers and develop professional development to talk about the changes. I also need to enable others to act. I need to collaborate with colleagues to have them have an understanding. I need to build their competence, listen to their feedback, and not just move ahead with my own personal vision. Having regular meetings will also help teachers form relationships and stay on top of new labor market data and allow for discussions on what is happening with the rest of the, in each of their classrooms. I need to reflect. I've built relationships and slowly integrated the new curriculum. Setting goals for myself as an individual and for a district will help me focus on what I need to do next. I have, dis I have successfully learned how to consider multiple perspectives integrated when designing curriculum. In addition, the masters helped me focus on incorporating multiple learner perspectives into the curriculum, into creating technology and analyzing the many different traits of the leader in order to be a successful leader myself. Students are more engaged in education and highly motivated about their future when they have a clear understanding of themselves and how they might live and work when they leave high school. There are economic and social benefits when students are supported to make effective transitions from secondary school to further education, training, or employment. Career education and guidance play an important role in the curriculum that supports students' interests, strengths and aspirations, achievements, and students making informed decisions about their subject choices and pathways. The revised BC curriculum focuses on communication, social awareness, and teamwork, problem solving, and I claim that by using these 21st century skills, all students will have relevant life readiness for high school graduation. Progressive ed education equips students with the necessary tools to be lifelong learners and for students to pursue their own path and find a job that will bring meaning to their life. This is why the concept of progressive education and career education is so important as it places the student as the primary focus instead of the teacher. At the same time, the class is effectively run through relationship building and mentoring. In today's world, even if you try not to change, the environment around us will change regardless. This means that teachers will be forced to change by default, or in my case, try to change and lead the way through a revised curriculum. I believe that we have an opportunity to shape education for our students' prosperity and success in the future by focusing on core competencies in career education. My application is to help teachers by providing current and relevant information and resources that they can use directly inside their classroom. It is evident that there is so much to consider about the 21st century. I hope that I inspire other educators to learn about the potential of integrating and assessing core competencies and technology in the career education classrooms.